we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm Kathy Murphy from the Iowa Bicycle Coalition, and I'd like to welcome you to our fourth and final webinar in our series on bike commuting. If you're curious about riding your bike to work instead of driving, you have come to the right place. Our focus today is on where to park your bike at work and how to choose a bike route. We have a couple experts with us today who will be sharing their thoughts and experiences. We've drawn upon the collective expertise of the members of the Iowa Bicycle Coalition to give you the best advice possible. They have shared their experiences to give you ideas about what works for bicycle commuting. If you know a bike commuter at your workplace, be sure to ask them how they do it. Bike commuters are almost always willing to share their experience. And if there aren't any bike commuters in your social circle or in your workplace, be sure to consult your local bike shop. Our ebook is made possible by the members and supporters of the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. This organization is a grassroots movement of bicyclists from across Iowa to make bicycling safe and accessible for all. The mission of the Iowa Bicycle Coalition is to promote safe and enjoyable bicycling in Iowa through education, events, better policy, and growing a community of supporters. You can join us at iowabicyclecoalition.org backslash join. Let's meet our experts. First up, we have Jake Hawk. Hey, Jake. How are we doing? Good. Give us a little bit about your background. Uh, sure. Uh, living, uh, I've been here for about 15 years. Um, part of the uh, CVC, uh, Cedar Valley Cyclists. I'm on the, on the board with them as a member at large. Uh, I'm helping out plan a couple of the events this year, like Lake to Lake, and, and probably helping with the Century Ride, a couple other things as well. So uh, we got a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, I've been commuting to work uh, off and on for several years, and uh, uh, a couple of longer rides, like some Rag Brides and Century Rides as well. All right. And in this photo, it looks like a beautiful brand new road. That is the uh, 27th Street time trial stretch coming out of Cedar Falls to the west towards Dyke. Oh, nice. Nice. And then we also have Nick next door. Hey, Nick. Hi. Tell us a little bit about you. Um, so I am, uh, you know, a father of three. Um, I'm a web developer. Um, and I, uh, I'm just sort of got into to bike commuting a couple years ago. Um, being a web developer, I pretty much sit at a desk all day and, just started putting on weight um, and just wasn't very active and wasn't happy about it. Um, so I had a buddy who started riding bikes and and he said, hey, why don't you you give it a shot and, and you've got a great chance to commute. We've got awesome trails here in Waterloo Cedar Falls. Um, and I'm able to, to bike commute all the way from Cedar Falls to Hudson um, to where I work and, and um, have been doing this. Uh, this will be my third summer of uh, commuting. So it's, yeah, it's, that's my bike life, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, we're glad to have both of our experts on the webinar today. So looking at uh, commuting by bicycle, there's lots of great benefits, including health, environmental, and economic benefits. Um, as far as health benefits go, it should come as no surprise that physical activity and exercise is good for you. What may come as a surprise to many is just how good it can be. Uh, Forbes.com published an article recently about the extraordinary health benefits to cycling to work. They tracked, I think it was like 265,000 people for five years who traveled to work. Uh, the effects of cycling were measured by comparing these people with non-active mode of transportation people. Cycling to work was associated with very large health benefits. Commuters who cycled to work had a 41% lower risk of dying from all causes than people who drove or took public transport. They also had a 46% lower risk of developing cardiovascular disease and a 45% lower risk of developing cancer. Also, uh, I saw in Cycling Weekly, another study done by the YMCA showed that people who had physically active lifestyles had a well-being score 32% higher than inactive individuals. 
So those of you who are already commuting, way to go. Those of you who are thinking about it, um, I would strongly recommend trying it. Now as far as environmental benefits, um, there's a website called youcanbikethere.com and they stated three basic reasons bikes are good for the environment. And they're pretty simple. Bicycling uses no fuel. Bicycles take a lot less energies to make than a car. And bikes don't require toxic batteries or motor oil. And then People for Bikes stated there are 800 million car parking spaces in the United States, totaling 160 billion square feet of concrete or asphalt. The environmental impact of all car spaces adds 10% to the CO2 emissions of the average automobile. And think of how many bikes can fit into one car parking space. Definitely an environmental benefit. And then we have economic benefits. The Iowa Bike Coalition commissioned the University of Northern Iowa to produce an economic impact study in 2011. The report, Economic and Health Benefits of Bicycling in Iowa, found that commuter and recreational bicycling in Iowa generates over 400 million in economic activity in Iowa alone. So that's more than a million dollars a day. Pretty sweet. Uh, communities have fostered popularity by proving, providing bicycle infrastructure for transportation and recreation. They've seen considerable economic benefits by attracting businesses, tourism, and active residents. Neighborhoods become more desirable when traffic slows down and residents have more transportation choices. Businesses can encourage shopping among loyal local customers by making getting there by bike more appealing. So let's get into a little bit more about this. So Nick, can you tell us why you commute? Um, basically, it's it's a way for me to get out and and get some exercise. Um, like I said in the intro, I have uh, three boys, um, and you know the time when I'm at home, I, I spend with them. And instead of taking my time to commute, you know, 20 minutes by car, I'll do you know 40 minutes to an hour on the bike and get my exercise in and then when I'm home, I'm home for my family. Excellent. How about you, Jake? Why do you commute? Uh, really, it's just a scheduling thing for me. It's it's so hard to get off work in time to, to get a lot of group rides in or things like that sometimes where this is, this is my compensation for that. Um, parking at work is kind of a bear sometimes too. Uh, it's a very big facility where I work, so there's just thousands of vehicles and the, the bike rack is, is definitely not taken advantage of to its full potential. So, And it's right by the front door. <laughs> so, <laughs> definitely kind of a, a win across the board for that. So it only takes uh, about, about 35, 40 minutes for me to bike to work, depending on the weather. At a, it's about 11, 12 miles away. Um, so, and it, it's mostly, you know, trails and stuff as well for the most part. So it really hasn't added a whole lot of time to my commute. Uh, when you figure in having to, you know, stop for gas every other couple of days and things like that, too. So it's uh, definitely been a beneficial thing. Excellent. So uh, assuming that we've got new commuters listening um, and they're wondering, if I'm going to ride my bike to work, where am I going to park my bike? Um, seems like a simple question, but we had so many people ask us this, um, and we thought we'd dig into it a little bit deeper. So unlike a recreational ride, your bicycle will be separated from you most likely and your bicycle needs to be secure the whole time you're at work. So, uh, Nick, give us some examples of indoor and outdoor bike racks that you've seen at workplaces. So what I've, I've seen and what we'll see around the Cedar Valley area is, um, you know, the, the outdoor bike racks that or sort of the grid system. I'll see those at quite a few locations where you put your front wheel in and and you park it and you you know you put your lock on so it just stays in place. Um, but you'll see in in downtown Waterloo and Cedar Falls um, some of those either a U shape or, or the the loop style outdoor racks where you can fit your bike in and chain it up there. 
Mm -hmm. um, those are the main outdoor ones that we see. Um, but uh, I have seen some businesses here in the Cedar Valley that do have some indoor bike storage, um, a nice place to hang up your bike uh, on the inside in a dedicated room where you you can put all your gear and, and set your bike up. So um, there's there's a variation of, of things that can be doing to be done on the inside as well. That's a great perk for a business to provide. <laughs> yeah, it's really awesome. And how about Jake? Um, if you actually are allowed to bring your bikes inside, but maybe there's not a room like Nick described, what are some examples of what you can do? Well, uh, just like pictured there, if, if it's allowed uh, and possible, uh, bringing them right to your workspace is, is great as long as it's not going to be in your way and impede your impede your work. Um, one one thing a lot of the places that I've worked at over the course of the time have, have done is, is set aside an indoor, indoor area to basically put a rack. Um, that way they're not out in the elements. You don't have, the, you know, the, the passerby concern and that kind of thing as well as far as uh, security. Um, and also usually that gives you a spot on the floor, like underneath your bike, for example, to stash your stuff and not have to worry about it too much. Uh, depending on where, where you work, uh, some of those things might already be, you know, provided for you might not know, know about know about it or no one's taking advantage of it so it's not quite so obvious but it never hurts to ask um especially with the smaller businesses uh around iowa if it's just uh if it's not a gigantic facility that doesn't already have a parking space for bikes or a bike rack outside uh definitely pose the question and, and see what options are available you'd be you might be surprised um with with where i work now it's in a le very large complex and there's there's a rack out like i said by security um, but with us being a smaller complex inside of a bigger one, they were perfectly fine with me bringing mine all the way back into the into into our area and locking it up at our facility in a in a much closer to where I work sense. So uh, it was definitely a, it was worth asking. So I would recommend that too. And I agree with that. I think a lot of businesses might not um, even think about a bike rack if they don't have any commuters. So you could be the first one to start a trend. Um, and also, if you just have a storage room at your office, a lot of times it's not used heavily, and you could stash your bike in there um, if you're commuting occasionally. Yep. There's one other option uh, called a bike locker. And we have these where I work. We have, um, I think there's 10 bike lockers. When you open the door, it's kind of a triangle shape. So it just, it's, you just slide your bike right in. Um, and it, it, it's exposed to the elements a little bit because they have ventilation on the side. But it is nice because you can lock it from the outside with a padlock and uh, it keeps your, your bicycle safe. Uh, you can stash your bags in there if you want during the day if you don't have uh, room in your office or in your office space. So that's another idea um, that, you know, maybe your boss would be open or your office to getting bike lockers uh, indoors or outdoors. So then the magic question is, how do you choose your bike route? Um, you know, maybe the only thing that you see when you're driving is uh, fast moving cars or lots of traffic lights. Um, and a great route is a critical component to enjoying bicycle commuting. I'm sure that the guys that are experts would agree with that. Um, so you really want to spend some time before your first bike commute to research your journey. So Jake, um, give us some examples of bike lanes and trails. Sure. Uh, so a, a bike lane would be something where you're sharing the traffic with uh, potentially with vehicles um, in contrast to a bike trail where you're sharing that same traffic space in a smaller sense on a maybe six or eight foot wide trail with uh, pedestrian traffic, uh, people walking dogs, oncoming bicycles, uh, anything like that, of course, and the occasional deer. Um, <laughs> and, and with that, uh, one commonality between them to keep in mind is definitely that uh, the, the same kind of traffic thoughts are, are still applied, trail or lane, keep to the right, and uh, if you're going to be passing, someone announce and things like that, too. Um, we're lucky up here in Waterloo Cedar Falls to have an exceptional trail system. Uh, there's over 100 miles of trail just in, in the, the greater Cedar Falls Waterloo area. Uh, so for, for our area specifically, which is the only one I know about personally, um, 
and I'm sure other cities have pretty good systems as well, but uh, the, the ability to get to work via mostly trail um, is where I would head people. Uh, one, you're dealing with less traffic, less cars, and things like that. You still have to be mindful of intersections and everything else and follow the laws there, but um, that does simplify life when you've got a long stretch of trail that's not a stoplight every 200 yards. Uh, it reduces the effort involved in the commute as well. That stopping and starting is, is a lot of the energy. In, Definitely. From, um, and then beyond that, you know, there are going to be sections where you need to be on the road uh, to get to your final destination. And uh, just bearing in mind the, the traffic patterns throughout the day, what are the high and low points versus your shift. And uh, if there's a parallel or back way to get there that isn't on the main road, definitely stick to the to stick to that. Um, I, I personally prefer to stick to roads that are 35 mile an hour or below. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't plan on getting on them. Uh, for the sake of just the distracted driver going that fast, might not have time to see the lights on. So, right, especially when most people are commuting, which is you know when vehicles are commuting, getting to work as well. Absolutely. Uh, Nick, how different is the ride, or how different can it be if the route is hilly versus flat? Well, um, just kind of like Jake, I, I know the Cedar Valley and, and our roads. And thankfully for us, uh, we're mostly flat. So I don't really deal with the, the hilly route. Um, but one of those concerns is is if you are bike commuting and, and Hills take a lot more energy than flats do. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're when you're planning those routes, you know you kind of have to think of being hot and sweaty, especially since the temperature is starting to rise here. That you know a route that's nice and hilly on the way to work is is going to tire you out and going to wear you out, and you're probably going to have to have more of those concerns on you know how do I smell, how are my clothes, am I too sweaty, and and those things that sort of add to the complexity of your ride. Um, whereas opposed to a flat, you know, you don't really have to expend a whole lot of energy. You can just kind of mosey along and, and just go at a, a nice, comfortable rate. And um, it can really just, it's just not as, as much work would be the main thing. You know, in going about picking those routes, um, one of the tools that I like to use um, is if you have a Strava account, you can actually look and um, see what other cyclists are using with the heat maps. And maybe you can, you know, if you have a potentially hilly route, you can look and see what other cyclists are doing to sort of avoid some of those hilly routes and see where a lot of the other bike traffic is in your area to either avoid something that you don't want to on the way to work and deal with the hills on the way home. Um, so there's, there's ways of getting around it if you're, you're a little concerned about doing the hills. And that is a great tip to uh, check out the existing routes like on an app like Strava. The other thing to think about is, um, you know, if you're a first time commuter, uh, most people probably will do a Google search, you know, at the beginning and then to ride it a couple times. And sometimes, more miles could mean flatter surface and an easier ride, if that makes sense. Um, there may be parallel streets. There may be less hills. It just depends on how many miles it takes you to get to work and if you have the resources at work to shower or not shower. Um, and a lot of our survey takers said just to take it slow. You know, you, it's not a race. Unless, of course, you do have the access to a shower once you get to work. Right. Um, most most of all, when choosing a route, don't settle for the first one you find because um, there's probably something else out there that could be a little bit quicker, a little bit flatter, a little bit less traffic. You just never know. That's yeah, with the traffic. Cool. What's, but um, I was going to just chime in with the traffic. Um, something that Jake brought up is just other people driving on the road. Um, there are times where I will shift my commute even 15 minutes earlier in the morning, and that can make such a huge difference on the amount of traffic that you actually encounter on your way. Um, so 
taking advantage of, you know, taking a little bit more time, maybe leaving a little bit earlier, and you can avoid some of the normal traffic commuters. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. It doesn't it doesn't take much. They're usually kind of, uh, especially if you work in a, a bigger place or uh, everyone's going the same direction at the same time for shift change, that kind of thing. Uh, which is definitely true for the road that my uh, my work's on because uh, it's a 3,000 person facility, so you've got 1,500 coming and 1,500 going at, at certain times of the day. Um, helping with planning that, uh, like it's mentioned here, uh, Google is fantastic for that because you've got you've got two options there. One is pulling it up as far as in terms of uh, as a car would do. Um, and that's going to give you, uh, like, you know, the red, yellow, green as far as what traffic is doing, how busy it is on a certain street and things like that at a certain time. Uh, usually it's kind of a live update kind of thing, especially in bigger cities. Um, and then at, when, you're, when you're putting that directions in, you can switch that over to the bicycle mode, which will, A, pull up all the, the trails that exist for you and highlight those in green, and it will bias your route to use those uh, wherever possible. Uh, so that's that's definitely a very handy thing to use too, and then it, it gives you the ability to uh, dr you know click and drag and adjust that route to to see what your mileage is really going to be. Avoid hills because it does map out the uh, elevation for you as well as it, as it works. So it's definitely a good tool. Great tips on Google use. Well, the other thing to think about as you continue with bike commuting, your fitness will gradually get better and improve. Um, simply because you're on your bike every day. Uh, hills that once seemed steep and daunting will no longer be as much of a challenge, and you may not even be sweating like you were your first time commuting. So it's something to think about. Well, as far as um, advice that you would give new commuters, let's, let's start with Jake. What advice would you give new commuters? Uh, plan ahead. Uh, the, the stuff you need to have for yourself at work, definitely, you know, get a week ahead of a time on that because you're going to always think of one more thing, and it's usually going to be when you're walking in the door, <laughs> sweaty, and, <laughs> sweaty, and ready to get to work, and going, oh, okay, and now I've got a, a visitor coming today that I've got to be presentable for, and I'm not going to accomplish that. So, um, the planning ahead part is definitely true of both picking the route, uh, the equipment, um, with the, the trails and roads, if you're going to do a mixture, um, I would lean towards a chunkier tire personally just for the sake of not having to worry about flats and being late to work. Um, that's just a personal preference, but that's how I like to go. Um, aside from that, it's it's fun, and uh, let it be fun. Don't, don't make it a race unless you really want to or have to, and uh, just get out there and put the miles on. That's the best part. Excellent. That uh, one of our survey takers uh, left a quote with us that said, "Don't overthink it, just do it." I thought that was great <laughs> advice. <laughs> yep. Uh, Nick, what advice would you give new commuters? I think the biggest thing, you know, especially for me, I, I'm fairly new to this uh, commuting thing. I guess this is my third summer, but um, thinking back to, to my beginner state. Um, the first question was, can I do it? You know, I've got 15 miles to work. Um, is it possible to do? Can I do it? Am I able to do it? And certainly, I mean, I am. I mean, it takes a little bit of time at the beginning, but the level of fitness goes up. You feel better about, you know, your fitness level. Um, you show up to work in such a great mood, um, just being outside and being active. Um, it's just one of those things where you just need to go out and try. You can do something for a week and give it a shot and, and just, just go out and try to, to commute and, um, you know, ask questions that you need to. There's such a wonderful community of, of cyclists out there who are willing to answer questions or give you tips. Um, all you have to do is just ask and say, you know, how should I do this? If there's somebody who's more experienced, than you are with a bike. Um, it's it's just such a great experience and a great way to start and end your, your work day. I completely agree. And make sure you take advantage of your local bike shops because chances are pretty high uh, somebody that works at a local bike shop is a commuter or somebody who just happens to be in there at the time is a commuter. And uh, I've never met a bike commuter who didn't want to share their story or what works for them. 
So, well, guys, uh, thank you so much for being on the webinar, Jake and Nick. We really appreciate it. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. Sure. And of course, if you want more information, um, the website's on your screen, iowabicyclecoalition.org backslash bike to work. You can download our ebook for free. And thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to uh, this fourth webinar in our series of bike commuting. Thank you.